uh, decision which was made in rather the same way. Two thirds of people didn't vote for Brexit, and that's what we've got. So we've got a situation at a national level, which is pretty much disastrous in my view. Um, and, but it doesn't have to be like that. Thanks. What am I doing with that? I can't remember. You can press it. Um, <laughs> um, uh, you know, so, so there's a Dutch election today, which, which is interesting in that there's a very far-right party. Um, but they had 26 parties um, competing in, uh, in Holland today. And so although the Dutch, uh, although the very far-right party may well have the largest seat, they'll never be in power. Because what they'll have is a pluralistic party representing views of you know, up to 26 different uh, manifestos, which is another way to do it. So we don't have to do it this way. But in my view, it's not going to change. I mean, I'm sorry about this, but quite likely in my lifetime, I don't see us changing. 100,000 people have signed up to whoever it is I've got on my chest. Make votes matter now, which is brilliant. So there will be um, a debate in the House of Parliament on proportional representation. I suspect we'll find it's in a corridor somewhere. You know, and it will mean nothing and it won't lead to PR. So what I want to say to you is that I think there is another way to do this, and the only way that I see functioning uh, in, a, in anything like a short time scale is by people at a local level getting their democracy sorted out and rising up and making that lot ir irrelevant. Because it's not going to, to change, um, well, it's not going to change through violence and turkeys vote, don't vote for Christmas, is my view on the things. So, that's the context. Now the story of Fruin. Um, I got involved in this very much as an accidental politician. I'm really a gardener and an undertaker. But I've also been involved in climate change in all sorts of different ways. And I, uh, I set up the equivalent of a transition town. You have a transition town movement here, and we have a similar one in Fruin. Which still exists, obviously. Great. Okay. Thrives, perhaps. Um, and, um, I, one, one of the things that I was due to do in that was to go to the town council to talk to them about their green policy. So I duly went and asked the town council about their green policy, and they said, we've got a park. And I said, yeah, I'm going to talk about climate change, and, you know, and um, peak oil and things. Like we've got a park, Peter. So I went away and moaned about this in the pub and found myself in a, a group of a number of people who had different stories coming from different angles. And basically how we had a town council which was very political, it swapped and chopped between Tories and Lib Dems every few years, and they basically fought each other, excuse me, in antagonistic ways that politicians learn from higher up. So they basically, they weren't overtly corrupt, but they were very, very um, inefficient and didn't take advantage of many of the things we think could be. So that led to more discussion, and then it led to a public meeting um, in a pub, uh, which a lot more people came to. Between those, we did a little bit of thinking about uh, what would happen if groups of non-party people effectively running as a group, could a group of independents work together? And we looked around at different places in Britain where independents ran councils and they were almost all disastrous. Um, actually, they were all really disastrous and some of them were really disastrous because most people who become independents are so extreme that they've been thrown out of their parties. So by the very nature of that, they're not going to be people who are going to work together. Um, and uh, I notice you've got a few independent Greens in Lewis, which, um, who might be some of those who've you know, been Greens and left in some way or other. So, you know, we looked at a whole bunch of all sorts of ways of, of overcoming that and came up with what we call our ways of working, which are essentially values. And they are, they are things like, I don't sound big so I can read it, um, a willingness and ability to participate in rational debate leading to a conclusion. Kind of pretty obvious, really. So they're, they're just a set of ways that we would work together as a group. And they are incidentally all written in um, this book which I was persuaded to write and has led me into doing this sort of talk because I thought we might sell a couple of hundred of these. We've now sold 4,000 of them. And over 100 revolutionary packs, which are sort of 10 in, a, in a, a pack, which are scattered all over Britain. So there are groups of people kind of trying to do things in different ways. Flat pack democracy. I was in Antwerp uh, last week, and there's a whole flat pack democracy political movement in Antwerp, which is why I went there. And I said, So, do you actually know what this means? And then there was this long discussion in Dutch, and it turned out they don't, they have no idea. The word flat pack doesn't really work, so I'm slightly amused at the idea of having a, a whole political party that, based on something which is a, a book title based on IKEA. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> um, so, 
um, what we said was we, would, we will work it this way and we will massively up the engagement and participation. So we will run a council which is really about being there to facilitate the community. It'll be that way around. We won't be represent, we won't represent you um, in, the, in that traditional way of being elected, disappearing for four years and then turning up when you want to be re-elected. We will work with you as a people. Or, you know, we will change the role of the council. So those are the two things we said. And so we didn't say we will do this. We, will, we didn't have any policies. So it's a very different way of doing politics. We didn't say we will build a bypass. We are against nuclear power. Because we don't know until we've worked together. So we ran as, a, as that group and we won 10 of the 17 seats with about 75% more people voting. So we had a, a working majority, whatever happened. And actually the remaining Tories and Lib Dems hated each other more than they hated us, so they never voted together. But they did all often vote as opposition, even when it was something which is obviously sensible, which is another of those weird things that sort of happens. But anyway, um, I'm not go down there too, too, for too long. So, for four years we did lots. Um, we did lots of things which, because we weren't shackled by party ideology, we could do, be based on entirely what is good for free. So if it was good to borrow money, we borrowed money, and actually we borrowed quite a lot of money. Um, had we been Tories, we wouldn't have done it, because we're in a period of austerity and we must <coughs> borrow and spend. But actually, it's really cheap to borrow money, and you can really do capital things which then make more money. Anyway, so we've been able to do a lot of things in fruit, which have been enormously um, positive. Um, one of the very first things that we did in order to get to that situation was we abolished all the committees, and we changed all the rules. I, have, I spent a little bit of an afternoon in Lewis on the outside of your town hall. You'll find there's a set of rules which tell you how you, um, if you want to speak at the council, how, you know, what, what you must do. You can have three minutes, you, must, and you can only ask two questions, the questions mustn't last for more than 15 minutes. That's all a choice. Nobody's told Lewis Town Council they have to do that. And we had all that too, it's all pretty standard. But we got rid of all of that. And we now run our meetings like this in this room, sometimes with numbers not dissimilar to this. Um, so that councillors are dotted around the room and members of the public are there. And you won't necessarily know that a councillor is a councillor until you come to vote and then they'll stick their hand in there. So all of that can be changed and we change it all. Now, with what I know we want, let's do that bit of music. That's why you gave me that thing. Just remember. Yes, sir. Good. Oh, don't want that one. Dun, 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 dun. In one way out of the national crisis that we face, we need a massive, sweeping, radical redistribution of power. We need a massive, sweeping, radical redistribution. A sweeping challenge. Radical redistribution of power. Transferring power and we must take power away from the political elite and give it to the man and the woman on the street. We must take power away from the political elite and give it to the man and the woman on the street. We must take power from the political elite and give it to the man and the woman on the street. We must take power from the political elite. Redistribution of power. Become a historical document that now, hasn't it? Really? Remember them? It's like they've just disappeared now, haven't they? Um, <laughs> the reason I wanted to play that was one of the other things that we knew was about to happen because somebody in Froome who worked in government was localism, which was exactly that. So, you know, um, whoever that was, I've completely forgotten him now, he, he really, really did say that. You know? So it was David Cameron's uh, intention to take power from the political elite and give it to the man on the street. Sounds worryingly like Trump now, I have to say. That's <laughs> also not sorry. Anyway, um, yeah. So, so, um, so we we knew that all this legislation was about to happen, which is partly why people like me got involved. Because we thought, hey, look, you know, the, the parish councils, town councils, will be able to do a lot more. I can tell you now, it hasn't been quite like that because unfortunately there was a sort of redefinition of what local meant. So in the same, I suspect you have the same issue here, again, from the very little bit of looking around and chatting to people I did this afternoon. Local stops at the district, so you don't actually get the power. 
So we, you know, we've got a uh, neighbourhood plan which has been uh, past referendum. Yours is a bit um, back from that, um, uh, you know, and it's still out for consultation. But even with a neighbourhood uh, plan and all of those sorts of things, the power and certainly the money never really came down to us. But it, that was part of what inspired us into, into getting together and, and get going. And we have been able to use some of that and to do a bit more than we might have done. So, um, I'm going to skip some of that. We took lots of risks, we made lots of mistakes, we, we like U-turns. Um, it's sort of slightly unpolitical to, to sort of say, oh yeah, you're right, that was a, yeah, we got that wrong. And, and to admit mistakes, um, we're well into doing that. Am I feeding back to someone? Um, and one of the other things that we worked on a lot was sort of reducing the status of councillors. Um, I was the mayor for a year and I um, had a, a, a slightly weird line in chains, which were really about trying to say, just because I have a chain and just because I'm a mayor, you don't need to treat me any differently. And they were again about trying to give power to the people who, who, who made chains for the event that I was doing. Um, and a number of other people have done things like that. And this whole attitude and way of doing things has attracted a, 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 some really, really good staff who are the kind of people who wouldn't normally work for councils, um, who've recognised that within that sort of environment they can really get things done. And key to this is that if parish and town councillors don't get their act together, lots of stuff is not going to happen. Now, that's because, as you will know, um, there is no, the money is not coming down from the county and from the district in the way that it used to. I mean, I don't know what the figures are here, but with us it's sort of ongoing 35% cuts for both those levels every year on year. So, um, Somerset County Council is now sort of technically bankrupt and is really only doing what they have to do by law. Um, and the district is in a not much better situation. So we've had no funding for the arts for eight years, there's no funding for mental health, there's no funding for children's services, and so on. So, if Froome doesn't do it, it's not going to happen. It's, it's one of the things that's you know, is behind our thinking. Which is why, if you don't have an ambitious, effective, joined up council that is working with the community sector, I think we've got real problems coming, or you know, uh, we all have. And that's, partly what inspires me to come and talk to people like you, because I think you know, it, this can be done, it's not that difficult, and that's really why I'm here, that you know, what we've done in Froome is not, it, it's not that clever. None of us, uh, none of us have been councillors before, we are a bunch of very ordinary people in lots of ways from that town, with a great age range. Now we're about half, well we're half women and half women, and half of us were born in Froome and half of us are incomers, although I've been, I count myself in the incomers, but I've been there 30 years. So, um, next thing that happened was we had another election. Um, so we stood in 2015, and I thought that no one would stand against us, because, you know, we're doing a good job, we're all kinds of room, why not focus on the higher levels? But actually there were 46 people who stood against us, uh, and there were 27 people who wanted to stand as, um, as independents for free. So 27 people wanted to be independents, 46 stood um, against us, and we won all those seats which is really much more of an achievement than the first time, because taking power initially was actually quite easy, to be honest. Um, in 65% of councils, district and town councils, there are no elections in Britain. You know, there, are, there are not enough people to stand, never mind having democracy, which is going all the way back to what I said at the beginning. You know, this lowest level is, is, is in a real state, um, I think. Uh, you know, and so, but it's chicken and egg. You're never going to get good people to, to stand and get involved unless they can do things. And if they get totally bogged down in not understanding the language and not being able to do what they want and, and not having fun, one of the things that we put in right from the beginning is we must be able to have fun. And one of the things that's attracted me to the Danish Alternative Party, and there's a new alternative platform in Britain now, which you can look up the Alternative Party platform. Um, they have, the Danish Alternative Party has six core principles, one of them is humour. And I thought a national party that has you know, humour in there as a core principle. They've got 12 MPs at the second largest party in Denmark. Um, they can only do it because of PR, of course. Um, now then, we've carried on doing much the same thing. There's only one thing I particularly wanted to focus on and come back to again in a way, which is the uh, involving people. So one of the things that we, as I said in the beginning, I said we do and we have, is to really go out and engage. We've got two um, community project officers whose job it is to support community organisations. We employ a fundraiser who is there for those organisations so that if they need help fundraising, 
It's to build their capacity. So we brought in far more money into Froome through lottery and through other funds um, in that kind of way, through working with the community. Um, and then this is really well illustrated by last Saturday. A hundred people came together and they decided on how we would spend all the money on community events next year. So 17 um, groups, big, um, in a sort of, um, what do you call it, that term, terrible uh, television programme, a sort of um, cave thing, you know what I mean? We have to sort of, be, thank you, dragon, I'm sick if you're away, um, dragon of them um, type of event. So people pitched in a very short pitch and then they answered questions, and then 100 people um, made those choices. They were people from the age of 10 athletes, and that decision's binding. So unlike uh, the Brexit um, decision, you know, so, so we as a council have no, that is the people's choice, that's it. And we've got another two events like that about to happen this year. Now for me, that's partly about public education, and it's about increasing the political engagement of the population. We may, if we had done what we normally do, and had four councils sitting around the table making those decisions, we probably would have made pretty similar decisions. I don't know actually how we looked to compare the two. But <coughs> the, the important thing is that level of engagement. Um, so, I think that's basically the story I wanted to tell you. Um, I mean, from what I can see here, as I say, my very brief bit, and I'm, and I'm definitely not here to, to try and analyse Lewis's council. The town council is doing a basic, standard, pretty good job. Again, as well as the rules the thing you get on the outside of the town council is uh, what meals the mayor is going to on your behalf. You know, and one of the things that a lot of town councils do is a lot of civic events. And what I would say is that's kind of fine. But going back to what I was saying about austerity, you know, I'm not sure it's fine forever that actually you may need as a community to sort of up the, the, the extent to which that facility of the town council can be used to, to work with everybody else. Because it's that joining together that I think is where this is at. And the rest of this evening, we're going to spend really looking at, in a sense, how, how a lot of you are doing politics anyway. And I think what's happened is we've got confused about party politics and politics. That most of us do politics. A lot of the projects which you're involved in, in Lewis, and a lot of the, the groups and clubs and organisations, they are politics, they are lobbying, they are you know, trying to get what you want. Um, and, uh, and, and what's happened is we've kind of put the, the, the party politics on a pedestal and, and sort of expected it to do stuff. But it, it's not doing it and it won't be able to do it. So unless we're able to reclaim politics as communities, then uh, our futures will be more tricky than they might be. That's it for now. Thank you.